You guys know what day it is, Steven Seagal Sunday. Today, we are watching another Steven Seagal movie. And not just any movie. This movie is called Attrition. Now, I don't know what that word means, so a quick Google tells us that it's the process of reducing something's strength or effectiveness through sustained attack or pressure. Sounds like Aikido. This is a relatively new one released in 2018. There is something actually special about this movie, something different than other Steven Seagal movies. This movie was written by none other than Steven Seagal. Yeah, that's right. This whole movie is the brainchild of Sensei Steven. And I, I'm just excited, man. I hope you guys are too. I'm ready. I hope you seagulls are ready because it's time for another Steven Seagal movie, Attrition. I've seen Steven do this in another movie, which I haven't watched. I've just seen YouTube videos on it. And he's doing the same thing here. He's holding the gun like I've never seen before. So this is a fake gun that I had for like a Halloween thing. Normally, this part here, right, of the gun is meant to be pressed against your shoulder. Part of it is for aim. And as well, when the recoil comes, it's just pushing back on your shoulder as opposed to here and then having the gun go like that. And if I'm wrong in any of this, I know you guys will correct me in the comments and I appreciate it. I've done military service and shit, so I, I, I've done weapons training. So this is standard, right? And you'll see some of the other people, the people behind Steven Seagal are going like this with this method. Steven is going like this. He's putting the gun on top of his shoulder like a mother bazooka i've never seen this in my life except when it's steven seagal holding a rifle you're meant to hold it like this so the scope right they have scopes at the top you could align it with your eye bro how the f are you aligning it when it's all the way up here on your shoulder dude why do they allow him to get away with this even if i'm wrong it looks stupid it looks dumb as fuck i saw it for two seconds and i'm already ranting for five minutes i have to cut all this shit down some say it's a necessity, the stage on which good can triumph over evil. Man, these bullets look f***ing garbage, dude. Even the sound of the bullet sounds so shit. Sometimes, the cost is too great to justify the means. Rex! Rex! What is he doing? Is he taking our pulse? He can't be. He's wearing gloves and his hand is facing the wrong way. Please don't tell me he's taking the pulse. For all the lines that have been crossed in the name of justice. <laughs> no! He was taking the pulse! Are you so fucking dumb? Even if I'm wrong and you could check someone's pulse with a fucking glove on your hand and your hand on the wrong side of their neck. Don't you have eyes? Can't you see? She's dead, man! I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. I thought he was just being like, oh, maybe it's a character he knows or someone he cares about. But no, this guy's just checking your pulse like... Taking a life for a life will only perpetuate the cycle. Then why did you just kill all those people? That girl died and you took the life of like four of those bad guys. The war must be fought from within. 
But I'll take a lifetime to make amends for the terrible things I've done. Oh shit, it's Cave Steven! Oh my god, this is Steven Seagal off the grid. No one knows he's alive. Look at him, all messy haired. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. The corruption of our world is diluvian in proportions. In places like Mongla, where the wicked run rampant. Human trafficking trade is estimated at $32 billion per annum. Animal trafficking is estimated at $23 billion per annum. Narco trafficking is estimated at $150 billion per annum. How do you combat evil when the whole world has lost its way? And in a place like Mongla, a border town of ungoverned criminals, Preachy asshole Steven Seagal is talking about Oh, did you know about all the trafficking of women? And then he sort of has stories that come out about These women that he's talking about here And then you want to talk about animal trafficking And you go over to the Chinese doctor and get some rhino horn and tiger bone and that kind of shit Can you just sit down and the doctor is coming very soon And he's gonna see everyone, everyone Please just, okay, just lying here you just stay here, okay? He's a doctor now. I wouldn't trust his doctor skills, bro. If he needed to, to check the pulse of that girl in the beginning, he's not a good doctor. I can't wait to see how amazing he makes his own character. He's already a doctor, the best soldier. Seems making me uncomfortable. Why does it have to be a girl? Why does she have to be topless? And why does Steven Hands have to be all over her? What? What was that, Steven? What'd you say? Stop it, Steven! Who's next? Mr. Jump. Boom. Done. You good. Two hundred dollars. <laughs> Imagine he charges them. Oh man, I know those. I know those slaps anywhere, baby. It's Aikido. Woo! Ah, oh, there's gonna be a lot of Aikido fighting. I see this guy's. His hand slaps are pretty good. They're pretty good, man. I don't know. I don't know against Steven how they're gonna compare. I hope. This could be one of the final fights, if not maybe a, a, a beginning fight where Steven puts him in this place kind of thing. You seen Sifu? I saw him last year. He's now older, but he doesn't want to admit that he's sick. He's not want to admit it. Do you think I can help him? I think this year is like a knife that's a knife. It can't be changed. You should go see him. I will. We will. We'll go together. Why, you never got to learn? I think he just liked me more than he liked you. <laughs> okay, so I'm having a problem with the subtitles. One is not translating this other language, and the other one I have it's not translating the English exactly, but it's still around the ballpark of what they're saying. So I'm going to use that subtitle track and we're not going to make fun of the sayings because it's safe to say the subtitles aren't 100% correct.
okay, not bad. Obviously, Steven used the stunt double for the parts where you couldn't see his face and it was like really rapid and fast. The director did really well to cut it in and out to blend. I'll give him that. It wasn't as shit as the vampire movie where he looked horrible with just like an axe. You know, this one actually had some cool form. Okay, not bad. Is this the dance of the butterflies or what, what, what is this? <laughs> According to the words of our great master, unless you have emptiness and complete calm, the butterfly will leave. Man, I feel like Steven just, he's just fucking bullshitting these random lines they're supposed to be deep thought provoking but they just don't make any sense you see you see he never left oh no he never left max your destiny awaits you What was that? Did he take some acid or something? Was there something in the tea that we didn't know about? And he's just tripping. Like, what the hell? What? Why did they have that scene there? You know the worst thing that can happen to a bad gambler, Lee? It's when the house doesn't care about his money anymore. When you're worth more as an example to others. Please, please, you can't kill me. I was something, something for your master, for Q mom. Well, all he needs you for is fish food. There's a girl in my village. Master Kumom has more wives than an emperor, Lee. Do you think some village whore can do anything like that? No, no, no. I know Kumom. He's a man of faith. The girl Tala, she knew things she couldn't know. These things no one can do. And she also has the power of healing. <laughs> That's the most threatening guy they could have got for the part of like the big bad guy. So he's acting like he's he punched the bag so hard his hands are bleeding, but there's like literally no cuts. It's just like red dye and paint. Like no lacerations, no cuts, nothing. Okay, that was an interesting twist. I didn't see that one coming. Who told Steven he looks good in that hat? Shame on you, but thank you. <laughs> Who is that guy? What? We didn't miss anything. What's going on? Okay, there it is. I was waiting for the Steven Seagal body double and there he is because he is as thin as a fucking pencil. It's not like the stunt double did a backflip or the stunt double did like a flying kick. The stunt double just did this. That's all he did. Punches were coming and he went with his hands down he went. That's it. Steven couldn't do that. That's what they needed him for. Actually, I'm very, very close to Mr. Shao. Him and his whole family are very good friends of mine. I pay for his granddaughter to go to school. I take care of their family. But Shang is a proud man. So for his sake, not for mine, when I go by the store every day, I take a little fruit, a little vegetable, a little bread. For his sake, to give him face. So he tells the guy I won't fight him, kicks his ass, Explains how he isn't stealing, but in fact the person you're accusing him of stealing from, he's paying for his daughter's school and medical bills and all of that. 
And just so he feels better about the good deed I'm doing, I take stuff for free so he feels better. Like, damn, Stephen, the saint, the prophet Stephen Seagal. <laughs> To have a little humility, Stephen. You don't have to get preached and complimented throughout the whole movie. I mean, I know you wrote it. Let me suck your cock! <laughs> I will not let you suck my cock. But in fact, I end up letting him suck my cock so he could feel better about himself. Because I'm, I'm that kind of person. <laughs> Go get me the biggest sack you can find and fill it full of down feathers and carry it to the top of the highest hill you can find and throw all the feathers everywhere in the wind and come back a week later and find every feather. Put it back in the bag and bring me the bag. What, bro? Bro, just let him suck your dick. Are you kidding? Did you hear what he asked of him? Just let him suck your dick, bro. Tom and Jerry? What is this? We're watching Scooby Doo? From colored sand. I've been to concerts and festivals where they do that uh, Indian, uh, I don't know what it is, the tradition or like the, the festival where they throw the colored sand and you just take it and you smile and you throw it on each other and it's like super fun. And these henchmen are just like cowering from like this colored powder. <laughs> Nice try. Don't be scared. Yet. Stop. Stop. It's okay. One more person. What is that acting? What is that? What is that? Yeah, next. Neck problems. Got no neck problems. Next! Elbow problems. <gasps> Wait, what happened? What's wrong? What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. My father has a knife. He's going to kill himself. You take me to him. You take me to him. I help you, okay? Come, take me to him. Let's go. I just feel like it, it's, what is the word? It's like par to the course, like it's bound to happen. Since Steven is just fucking saving everyone and doing everything for this town, I'm waiting for him to save an animal. Lada! Lada, <laughs> oh no, he's serious, bro. Got a little butter knife by his neck. I don't think I've ever seen someone kill himself like, I've had enough. Please, brother. This isn't the answer. You know nothing. So tell me. You can tell me. Stephen be like, this is not the answer. You kill yourself. I kill your son. <laughs> I don't deserve to live. But I cannot die. Unless I'm brave enough to end it now. <laughs> Brave is to live through this for him 
And Steven's like, but you gotta tell me. He forgot his line. Brave is to live through this for him. Like he almost mumbled a word, but then forgot what it was, so he just stopped. He needs you. He loves you. I want you. to die. It's ah, it's so weird because it's like all the Asian actors are like they're acting really hard. Or it feels like they're overacting because Steven is underacting. So when you put them in a scene together, I don't know, I just, I'm just like sitting there like, what the fuck is going on? I'm not a coward! I will prove it! Did he just say I'm not a coward as he's about to kill himself? He's like, I'm no coward! Don't you call me that! Ah, this life's too hard! <laughs> I did kill myself! Kill me, I give you my life so you can live for him. <laughs> Stop cutting to the sh kid's shitty acting. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sick of it. <laughs> God damn, it's just so over the top. Hi! Oh, like, Steven didn't do anything though. Like, why is he getting all this props? It's like, bad guy, Steven doing something good. Bad guy, Steven getting praised. <laughs> Where is the cut on the dude's neck, man? There's blood all over the knife. I see no blood at any side of his neck. After credit scene with his daughter or something. Why was that in there? Who are you? I am nothing. I am everything. I am emptiness, the suchness of luminosity unborn and undying. You have turned from your ways of the past, ways of pain and great suffering. You will soon face a crossroad, another chance to save the many you could not save before. You are the only one. Why have you come? It is you. Oh, Steven, don't feel her up like that. She's like the angel. She's like the angel of light. She's come to give you a word of advice and you're like feeling up her arms and her shoulders. Don't fuck her, Steven. Please don't fuck the angel of light. <laughs> Steven's like writing the movie and then the angel light comes and warns my character of the future ahead. Her tits will be out and then I fuck her. I fuck her so good. <laughs> you don't know how to act like you just woken up before Steven just... How do we do that? Do we do like that? Hey, Xiao Mei Mei. Come here, I have tang chi. Come here. 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 trying to take her home. As Steven Seagal is going to find the kidnapped girl, the daughter, he just stumbles across a group of traffickers stealing a little girl, offering her candy in the van. <laughs> Amazing writing. Steven just falls into these situations every corner he takes. Your town has uh, got quite a reputation for murderers, rapists, drug dealers, drug addicts. Which one of these categories do you fall under, bruh? Did he just drop a bruh? You know 
there's no greater evil than those who harm children. You know what I did before I started kidnapping children? No, what did you do? I was a hitman for the tribes. Wow. You are one of those idiots who learn Kung Fu. Believing all true power must come from a spiritual foundation. I, however, learned Kung Fu to kill. Okay, so Mr. Hitman over here. I would be a little worried for Steven. Had you not just run away like a little bitch as soon as Steven beat the shit out of your friend. You were like, instead of being this amazing Hitman, you went... You are at a tremendous disadvantage. <laughs> You are in for a tremendous disadvantage. Hop, huh? missed, and then Steve, like, he's going at like half the speed, just like, oh, come here, come here, bop! <laughs> <laughs> he loves that finger technique. He loves that, where he could like control someone. He's like, come here, come here, come here. Forehead smash! Dude, this guy, has he even touched Steven yet? Fuck no. He's like this drunken panda technique, just... Where did the blood come from? What the fuck? Did he kick him in the chest and the blood came out his mouth? Oh, Kung Fu. Very good Kung Fu. Come with me, I want to teach you something. How Kung Fu, son. So he just he grabbed the guy, he's like, come with me, like literally two steps, put him. And then he just started talking all this shit. You're like, alright, what's he gonna drop him with? And then he just up, uh, just like does like a half kick, just uh, barely lifts his knee up to kick the dude's face. I'm not impressed with that. I want to ask you just one thing, Mailing. Do you steal from Mr. Hao? Yes, sir. Why? I have a daughter. And how old is she? Seven. She has leukemia. I come from the deep mountains in the north. They say with the best medical treatment, it could be curable. But if I don't get her to the better hospital, she will die. <laughs> this is just bad acting. I don't know, he's taking off his glasses, like he's gonna cry at this shit story. I was waiting for him to be like, oh, he has leukemia? Hello? S Steven? Yeah. We have a girl with leukemia. Can you bring your stuff? Okay, she's good, man. He'll come, he'll cure her, he's the best. Chen <laughs> Shifu. Why is this guy always taking off his glasses, bro? Stop it. Do something else. Play with your hair or like rub your chimps. Every, every chance he gets. Yeah, I stole the ring. I needed the money. My daughter has leukemia. Axe is outside. He's waiting to see you. Hey, boss. Two of the men's toilets are clogged and they can't flush. I only know Kim Mom by reputation. I know you guys are in the same town, the same business. What's the story with this guy? He controls drugs, human trafficking, and extortion. It sounds to me like you think somebody needs to stop this guy anyway, so. Against Kim Mom, things can turn real hard real quick. That's why we need the right tools and the right people for the job. Classic action scene montage of them building their team of misfits to go save the girl and led by none other than Steven Seagal. Oh my god, they have the big letters with their name on it as well. Scarecrow, fucking cringe. I know what you win, Fidel. <laughs> How's the debt collecting business coming? Never better, but I could sure use a new gig. 
guy not have gotten a better nickname than fucking infidel? Ass? Oh. Nothing special, handsome. Just another day in the office. And you know Steven wrote this movie, so when the girl's talking to him, hey handsome, hey cutie. By the way, the first half of this movie was very like Karate Kid, uh, Enter the Dragon, Jet Li style. And now the second half of this movie has become like a, like a Fast and Furious, Ocean Eleven. Cool. Sam Ben and I, we were just traveling through the area. We decided to stop by and see you. Yeah, Kung Fu is <laughs> oh, this is the this is the big sifu we've been hearing about from the beginning of the movie. Okay. Oh 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 butterfly technique. Let me get in on the butterfly action. Gets in on it, he's like, No, no, just you guys. Okay, sorry, I just felt left out. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <笑>我也是很有趣的。<笑><笑> Bitch, man, just come on, just enjoy the moment. Don't don't be a little uh, jelly belly. All right, don't be a jelly belly. He's like, why, 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 why are you gonna do that with me, man? I've been there with you all the time, bro. You never, you never do this butterfly stuff with me, bro. I just want butterfly with you. Okay, ow. What is the Saifu is gonna now just say like, it's not because I don't respect you. It's just because this guy, Steven, man, have you seen him? He's the fucking bomb, dude. He kicks ass. He's amazing. He taught me shit. I never knew. He taught me love. Now you're gonna tell him this? Now, bro, after all these years, you tell him this now? Why? What, what, why is, why do things in this movie just happen for no reason? Oh man, it's a good thing he's, your son's not wearing glasses at this moment. This will definitely be a moment for him to just take him off real quick. He can't help himself. Dude, you, you, you failed your principle. Yo, if that's your principle, choose the right opportunity. Choose another principle. You're not good at this, bro. Your timing is really fucking bad. Why is this in this movie, man? They're just forcing all this bullshit for no reason. Steven, you could have cut the script in half with all this bullshito you put in the movie. You just you sprinkled the bullshito all over, but it's enough, dude. Come on. He's not a target, but he's a very important player. This is the woman we're looking for, early 20s. Uh, she's almost certainly... Uh, you heard that, like Steven forgot his line. He was like, uh... And they just left it in. On it. Yin Yin, I want you to go in there dressed as a customer. Uh, you can dress like someone real sexy. It's up to you. Nah, it's up to Steven. And the decision's already been made. She's gonna dress sexy. What the hell is that name? Q Mum. I really don't know, but I could introduce it to his mama and you could ask her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
A mama joke, Steven. Mama joke, it's got the whole table laughing, chuckling. Oh, Steven! Hey! This guy, bro, it's just zingers, dude. How do you do that? That's good acting. The, the fact that they all managed to laugh at that line, I'll give them props. When props are due, that's it's good acting all around. Yeah, but not for me. The wild one. Now I remember you. X. Again, in this movie, they just, the people who have to meet and have a conversation to see if they can make him flip, they just stumble across each other in the good old Chinese pharmacist where you could get your tiger bone and rhino horn and all your good needs. <laughs> now I remember you. X. Otherwise known as Demon Cock Demon Slayer. Demon Cock Demon Slayer? Otherwise known as Demon Cock Demon Slayer. Demon Cock Demon Slayer. I put the subtitles on, it says the Mongolian. So don't uh, don't be like, oh, turn on the subtitles. We'll find the subtitles aren't that good. Enough of the history lesson X. Why did you bring me here? Well, you know, I just, uh, the last time I saw it. Was I just stumbled on his line. I just kept going and they left it in. I really hope this guy just punches Steven once, please, man. If not him, at least the last guy, the the the, the big bad guy. Let someone punch Steven, please. Oh no, the butterfly technique! Get the fuck out of there, dude! He's got the butterfly technique, dude! He's fucked! <laughs> His slaps made him bleed. He went, -da -da! <laughs> blood everywhere. <laughs> Uh, look at that, no belly on Steven and he looking more like Neo from the Matrix with those moves with the jumping around, stunt doubles in play. <laughs> What technique is that, Steven? The double punch on the side of the face while he's already down on all fours? Bro, I don't think the UFC would even allow that in a fight. Steven just pounced on him and just went... Bub, 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 bub. Oh, he fucked this guy up. Call an ambulance. I pay for everything, don't worry about it. Mostly. After all this Asian stuff, he's like, call an ambulance. Uh, I'll pay for all this shit, all right? Chin tao, chin tao, bye bye. All right, call an ambulance. Why you gotta call the police? Problem is, this team does, and they're heavily armed, and that's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna try to go in with a soft insertion. Cool, calm. And if you hear me or him say go hard, it's gonna get hard. When Steven says it's gonna get hard, trust me. It's gonna get hard. His dick. With a red bracelet, you get access to the whole club, including private rooms and all the fun things that happen there. How does it sound like she's reading it from a script and she still sounds like shit? I didn't get one. I got two. What the fuck? What's happening? Why? Why did she have to do this? Steven demanded a lesbian scene. He's like, I need a lesbian scene. I don't give a fuck how it'll fit in the movie. We make it work. I saw these three guys that I tried to follow, but they were all led off into the private area. They got a very strange tattoo. Ugh, she's so slow. Her delivery is so slow. I fucking hate it, man. Steve was like, I'm taking one of those red ribbons for sure. You guys can go around the back. We know a guy, he'll open the door. 
I'm getting a red ribbon. You said they have access to what? All the private rooms and all the, what happened? Really? A lot of crazy things happen there? I'll get the red one. And then my boy will also get another red one. You guys can hide from the back. Get through the back. But Steven, we can all go through the back. There's no need to get a re red ribbon. No, there is a reason. I'm gonna get a red ribbon just in case. Just in case. We need a backup, guys. I'll take the red ribbon. Steven, don't get distracted, man. Focus on the mission. Triple massage on the all clothed man. How, what a crazy room that is. I want to be a part of that room. They got Shisha in there too, man. They got Hookah in the back. That's that's a, that's probably the, the shittiest room I've seen so far. <laughs> Next room is just like two guys just eating peanuts. Hey, what's up, guys? This is the peanut room. We just eat peanuts and shit. Sometimes we shove them up our ass. <laughs> Man, what about going in like the shadows? Didn't he say that? This is what he said. I'm gonna try out going in with a soft insertion. What shadows do that? Does Steven Seagal know what shadows are? Even in his other movie we watched, The Foreigner, he was like, they came in through like the shadows and they like smashed through the windows. Steven, do you know what a shadow is? As always, Steven's too old to do the martial art part of the movie, except of course with that butterfly dance he does like three times. But they always have to hire, get this young guy to do all the martial arts and the cool fighting scenes because Steven just can't do it, man. He's too old. He can barely kick as we saw. So uh, yeah, it's a good thing they have this guy so they have some good fight sequences while Steven goes and headshots every other person in the club. <laughs> Now you're gonna see them go to the other toilet and pick up a goddamn bazooka. Was that really necessary, dude? To shoot the guy's brains out while he's already on the ground? I'm gonna try out going in with a soft insertion. attack man this is just spray and pray just like I clear every room one by one <laughs> battle of the axe and daggers dude of course if Steven was there he'd just come like bang their heads together and just the fight will be over but this will make it a little more even They both took off their jackets, so this shit's about to get intense. Finish him. Ah, oh, boo, you suck. Did you just say Sketcherama? Woo, he did. Free plug. <laughs> Bro, 
you tell me he doesn't remind you of that bear panda and Tekken the way he's like oh, oh, oh. Dude, he is whooping his ass, man. This isn't even fair. Can the guy hit you, Steven, once? I gotta say I like it. I hate it when I watch a movie and then like the bad guy, the really bad guy who does all the evil shit, they, they end up like just shooting him in the head. I'm like, what the hell, dude? You let him off easy. So I'm down for this. Okay, that was bad. That looks like shit. That looked terrible. Please don't fuck her, Steven. Please, let, let this one be free! <laughs> that is to say that the world as we used to know it doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. The traditions, the values, the ethics, the morals given to us by our fathers, by our fathers' fathers, our ancestors, our masters, are not rapidly diminishing. They are almost literally gone. Asian martial arts have gone all over the world, but it is at risk of a deep, dark sickness. For there are those who have sought to use their strength and knowledge, not for the greater good, but for their own evil ambitions. These are the masterless ones, the Ronins, the ones who have broken the lineage. Where those of the most precious wisdom to leave behind to us have been forsaken, ridiculed, and ignored. I've never seen a movie that ends and in the last few minutes of the movie they show a montage of the whole movie we just watched. But okay. Kung is not just for the Chinese, it's for all people. As all martial arts are for all people. Lastly, I just wanted to say it's been my honor to be alive in a time where real masters have walked here, where I've been able to walk, to listen to them when they've spoken, and they've led all of us to where we are today. Wait, who are these people in the room that they all have to discuss martial arts with? Who are, uh, context, Stephen, please! If we can devote every last breath we have to the propagation of trying to protect the last bit of unbroken lineage and commit our lives to helping the innocent, the needy, the defenseless. Setting an example of humility and servitude for the generations to come. Then Kung Fu may yet survive us all. All of these words today that we've all spoken will have been worth something. And our prayers will not be empty. Come be. Come be. What? What was that? What is that about? What was he talking about? I didn't understand. What the fuck, man? He ended. To be fair to Stephen, he ended the movie the way he started the movie. With him talking a bunch of gibberish. I don't know what the fuck he was talking about. Uh, I don't know what happened to the girl. We never saw her use her healing ability. We don't know what was so special about her. We don't know what happened to his friends. We don't know what happened to Steven. He just sits with a group of masters or whatever. I don't know who they are. And they discuss martial arts for, or, or they just wrap up the movie. Steven, look, okay. You, it was obviously written by Steven Seagal. There's no doubt about it. Like his character is usually like overpowered, but this guy was not only overpowered. He was like loved by everyone. He was the doctor, SWAT sniper, everything all in one up. Oh, he put everything in one, in one movie. But with that being said, it was still a funny movie to watch. Steven Seagal just kissing his own ass and big, bigging himself up for an hour and a half. It's kind of annoying. I wish they didn't go between languages because it was such a pain in the ass. I hope they just, 
They should have just stayed in English. But it was still a funny movie to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. Um, I'll see you guys down in the comments as always. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button if you like this video because these are the kind of videos we do around this channel. Other than that, I hope you guys have a good one. So till the next Sunday, I'll see you guys.